What is up, ladies and gentlemen? This is our new tech streaming setup, which is in beta. Okay, don't go too hard on this yet. We haven't tried this before. We're experimenting with a lot of new hardware and software in this stream, but I figured, yes, especially, I saw John was there in the chat. I was inspired recently a lot by Front Page Tech's recycle bin. I was like, man, we have got to step it up. We've got to step this stuff up. Electric, <laughs> why? No, when the countdown ends and Xander's hosting the stream. Why? What would be wrong with that? Hey, people. How's it going? <laughs> I can read so much of the chat. Why the... What is... Electric logos dope. Looks very good. USB-C shirt again. Gotta represent USB-C, the last port. Come on. How are people doing in the chat today? I want to hear from you guys. I want I want to know what you guys think. We can stream now from a DSLR. We've got a better microphone. Hopefully you guys like that. You can actually watch this stream. Don't know if it's for sure, but at 1080p at 60 FPS. So you may only have it at 360p, but it, uh, let me see. I can prove it here. 1080 at 60 goes all the way up, which is cool. So it's an upgrade, all right? That's, that's the benefit for you. And once people start super chatting, you'll really see some new features we've added, okay? Some of the, some of the things uh, Twitch has seen for a while. Oh, let's see if this works. Uh, fastest Boy says, like tradition, you gotta dab, my guy. It's a $2 dab. That's all you get for a two-buck dab. Oof, not with my <laughs> speed. Now, see, like, now there's gonna be a bunch of people who are used to watching these at, like, 360p who are now actually missing out on things, which they didn't see before. But hey, you got Super Chat overlays now. When people donate, here are the rules, okay? Let, let's get something very, very clear. If someone donates under $5, you get the Apple Pay Touch ID looking animation here. I don't know why I'm nervous. I'm so nervous I've been working on this for so long. I go live all the time. You guys will see. But when Bingo Cat donates, which will be right here, I think you guys will actually hear the sound. If it works, let's see if this works. Did you hear it? How about that? All right, so when people don't, wait, that was a smaller one. What camera do you use in your Talos of tech vids nowadays? The quality is really amazing. Thank you, Bingo Cat. That was different super chat, or was that early? Did you hear it that time? That one was kind of out of order. Aiden S says, I had to try and see. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, there's no sound if the super chat is under $5 because we get a lot of those and we don't want the Apple Pay sound to go overboard, which means that when there is a $5 super chat, you will get the sound. And if it's over $5 up to uh, $50, uh, they're a different. Okay, no, like if you're over $15, you get the face ID animation with the Apple Pay sound. If you are over $50, you will get an even more satisfying sound. Hey, Krista. Thank you very much. So keep in mind, if, you, if you're donating under five bucks, you will not hear the Apple Pay sound. If it's over five bucks, you will hear a sound in different animations depending on how much the donation is. So thank you very much, Krista White. Now when you guys donate, you get your little Apple Pay animation there. And uh, depending on how much you donate, you get different animations. There's a really cool one uh, for 50. So anyway, the nine says, did Amazon finally show up with your new hookup to the DSLR? They did, luckily one day after the vlog. They must've watched the vlog or so. Much better live stream camera. Thank you. That's what I love hearing. People who are satisfied. Oof, it's called Payment Successful. It is. Yes, I cuss to raise money for charity. Oh, look at this. Someone's showing off some of the more recent. Noobish Expert says, what are the perks for Patreon? Probably would do it anyway. Uh, there's plenty of perks for Patreon, and they're all listed on our Patreon page. So people who donate $10 a month, you get to be in the outros of videos. People who... Um, Donate three dollars a month. Get uh, get uh, to be the end of vlogs and movie reviews and stuff like that. Where if you donate just one dollar at all, you're qualified for a monthly giveaway. And we also release things early, like our episodes of Hello World or the Saturday Shorts for people who donate anything at all. <laughs> Sorry, there's a bunch of new questions. Question is uh, Black Magic Ursa Mini 4K. You can look that up yourself. Black Magic U R S A Mini. And that's what it is. It's right over there. Talked about it before. And yeah, you get uh, quite a few quite a few perks on Patreon. As they go up, the perks get better. So people who donate $20 a month get to become a moderator. Stuff like that. Let's see. Hunter donated. He says, hey, Drew, longtime lurker, first time super chatter. Just wanted to support you. Love your content and your refreshing POV on tech. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Glad to see Vipers in the chat as well. Thanks for joining us. Jackson Drakes is my first stream since the Talosiv Editor Gaming stream. Keep up the great work, Drew. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. You guys going overboard with Super Chat today. Glad you like the new setup. This is where <laughs> John's texting me right now. He's like, proud of you. <laughs> I just needed to please John. That's all I wanted to do with the text setup is like, we got to look cool. You know, like John, John's setups are so cool. We're not, we're not front page tech cool yet, but I'm glad that he's proud of me. That's all I was really trying to satisfy was John Prosser. Anyway, Apple Sheep Magic. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of hardware and software at work. So I'll tell you the story. Luckily, the stream seems to be running okay right now in OBS. I, I have to look at like eight different things right now. But um, it's quite thin and it's hard to see. Eh, it's there. It's supposed to lay a little reminder. But um, so like I have this countdown, right? So before the stream starts, we do that little five-minute countdown animation with the T and everything. And by, oh, now it's happening. Come back to me. The internet, don't you go there. So here's the thing. OBS is a little bit less reliable with the bandwidth. And this is the reason I was hesitant to go to go too far into the other live streaming markets is because for some for whatever reason when we stream with OBS, things kind of go all over the place. Right when I started that countdown, immediately we'd been testing the stream. We've been testing it on like private channels for a long time, trying to see uh, try, trying to test out how the countdowns can work and how the music can work and how we can cut back and forth to things. All of a sudden, like, OBS just drops down to zero, can't get any internet. OBS is the streaming program we use to make these things live. Uh, and all of a sudden, it just cannot stream. And, and it's at zero FPS. So you guys missed the first f full minute, which I know you're bummed out about, um, of, that, of that silly Talos of Tech countdown before the live stream begins. But anyway, I was just saying it drives me nuts because... Oh, yeah, it stands for Open Broadcasting Software, um, which I just, uh, I'm, I test it all day, no matter how much I test things. I've been testing things for like literally days ever since I got the uh, Elgato Cam Link, and I was like, okay, let's experiment with this. Let's run OBS for a while. And then all of a sudden, internet stops immediately after I tweet out like, hey, this is actually going to happen. We're going to do it for real. So I apologize if the internet cuts out for whatever reason. I will do my best to fix it. You don't need to all spam it at the same time. I can tell when frames start dropping. So anyway, I see the super chats. Let me catch up here. This is the last guy I responded to. Oh, yeah. Hunter says, long time lurker. We got that. Taylor uh, Jackson Drake super chatted. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, T Tech Mania says, "Awesome channel, man. Big fan. I Hunter always super chatting. Sub to I Hunter. Thank you very much for the super chat. And there you go. I think we're caught up. So, anyway, now that we've hyped up Talos of Tech 2.0, Talos of Tech Live 2.0. You know, it's kind of like Despacito 2. I was hoping I could like Talos of Tech 2, just to hype it up like that. Um, there is plenty of drama going on today on YouTube. So there's not too much tech news going around, other than like." Hey, the iPhones will have more color options. It, that, that's about it, really. There's not much to talk about there. But all people want me to talk about is other YouTubers now. After I just uploaded a video saying, like, guys, you know, I don't really want to be a channel that just completely grows entirely based on making content about other people. I don't want to be drama. I don't want to be, like, a content cop or just go around and make videos about other people, and that's how we get big. Okay, like, especially after the whole Lewis Rossman situation, I am wrong about a lot of things. There's a lot of things I don't know a lot about. And yet, even if I don't know a lot about it, a billion people are still going to ask me to talk about it. So I either have to ignore the fans or do what those channels don't want me to do, which is comment on things. They're like, Drew, don't talk about that. But everyone's saying, Drew, talk about that. So I go back and forth on what, whether or not I should do it. Like in the last OBS... Don't you mess around with the frame drops. See, this is going to distract me the whole time. I'm, I'm so distracted by the bandwidth. Whereas when I, when I, when I streamed via the like built-in webcam on Google Chrome, I was like not, I was not thinking. I, I was just like, go live. That was all I had. I just nothing else to base it off of. Uh, Kayleen super chatted, no comment, but thank you. Um, T Tech Mania says shout out to my channel, Apple Geek to Apple Geek. Thank you, T Tech. Uh, Benji Polly says, hey, Drew, remember me? Of course. It was fun collaborating on your channel. But anyway, I tried to explain in the last tech video that, like, I don't want, I didn't want people to have the satisfaction of, like, oh, Drew makes Dave Lee response video because uh, everyone just kept asking, 
even when I would do regular videos, all the comments are just like, talk about Dave Lee, talk about Dave Lee. Now it's all talk about zone of tech, zone of tech, copyright strikes, copy, can we copy strike zone of tech? All that stuff. And I'm just like, guys, like, do we have to make all the content? And then, and then people on Twitter get mad at you for saying like, make content about, make original content. Don't like keep poking fun at other people. I'm like, ugh, I can't decide what to do. Everyone wants you to make videos about other people, but also people don't like it when you're not original, and then they comment, this is a reaction channel now. So you guys are very, very split, all right? So my job as a YouTuber is to try to, in the best way possible, um, appeal to my audience, try to make content that you guys are all interested in, and it's, it, it's tough right now because reaction videos, while they do get a bunch of views, very easily get a bunch of views, um, a lot of people don't like that style of video, and it definitely brings over fan bases that may not or may not agree with you or like you. So it destroys your comment section if you talk about a particular YouTuber and you disagree with them, uh, unless it's unless it's someone like Front Page Tech, who I love talking to. Uh, there, there's other smaller tech channels that I can interact with and will be fine, but when you start talking about the bigger channels and you start addressing them, all their audiences come after you, and it just ruins your comment section. So... I'm I'm hesitant to go that into that field, but um, it sucks. Yeah, it sucks that anyone gets a strike, but the uh, the debate still comes down to: uh, is it well deserved? Is it not well deserved? Uh, should he act on it? Should he not act on it? Um, I I would like to go into that during a live stream uh, today, so um, I will go in a little bit more into it. But we got some super chats here, so let me catch up. Uh, Chance plays game says I'm saving for an Apple Watch. Which one to get? Wait for the new ones. Okay, that's all I can recommend to anyone right now. Just wait for the refresh. Don't waste your money right now. Bad idea. Front page tech luckily is watching the stream. Says I wish I could send gifts in chat. I would send the emperor saying, "Do it. Let the hate flow through you." Oh, so you're okay with like Star Wars memes, just not prequel memes, John? Prequel memes matter. All right, please. Hashtag prequel meme. Anyway, Catherine says, please give your opinion about MQHD and OnePlus ad and Daniel on Zone of Tech getting copyright strike. Both are just insane. So this goes along. I didn't even think about that. The MQHD situation. All people want us to talk about now is other tech channels, other YouTubers. Talk about this YouTuber. Talk about this YouTuber. And right now I'm like, do we have to? Can't we just... Can't, can't we just make it about tech stuff? But uh, I don't know. I was happy the Surface Go came out. Not that I, I want the Surface Go, just that it was a new product we could give our thoughts on, not always have to talk about other people. Charles said SDI to HDMI converter, then Blackmagic Cam. I'm actually using my older camera that I used to use in the Oroville office. Um, it's a Lumix camera, so this is not the Blackmagic. Blackmagic's over here in its normal recording spot. But anyway, thoughts because you super chatted um, seemingly the most so far. Yeah, um, YouTube, once again, surprises no one and does not have an adequate setup for if an advertiser, I didn't even know this was possible, an advertiser can take a video from some YouTuber who made a review they liked and just promote it and just suddenly advertise it heavily. Oh, no. OBS, come back, come back. Your frames drop. There we go. Green is good. Oh. Is, is it lagging for you guys? Because I don't like that lag, and I wish there was something I could do about it. Okay, it looks, see, it looks to be a bit more stable. I see the Super Chats, by the way. I will read them in a bit. Yeah, OBS goes all over the place with the frame rates. I'm sorry. I wish I, I, wish I knew how to fix that. We may have to knock it down from, uh, we may have to knock it down from 1080 if it, if it gets that annoying. But anyway, yes, I see the lags. Good now. Audio isn't dropping at all. Okay, gotcha. So, um, yeah, an ad, a OnePlus can just see a, a phone review they like and then just advertise it. And now all of a sudden, this seemingly unbiased review, because MKBHD was not sponsored by OnePlus, now looks sponsored because anyone who watches the video, it will say ad by OnePlus, ad, uh, ad by OnePlus at the bottom, which it doesn't differentiate that the uh, company is the one that paid for this advertisement, not MKBHD which I agree with Marquez on this, it absolutely should. It absolutely should say on it like, hey, OnePlus promoted this, but MKBHD made it. Now it looks like he was sponsored by OnePlus, and he definitely wasn't. Marquez very rarely does sponsored content. So, yeah, I completely agree with him on that. That's kind of messed up. Um, I mean, I'm confused by it because now that video is like the most viewed video on his channel, but not really 
via genuine views. It's really just the biggest video on his channel because uh, OnePlus promoted it. So now, obviously, the views are right higher. Does he get ad revenue if his video is treated as an ad? So, like, when people tap on his video, does another ad play on that ad? I'm not sure. I haven't actually tried. I have YouTube Premium anyway, so I don't I don't notice if there's ads on it at all. But um, yeah, that I I completely agree with uh, I completely agree with Marquez on that. They should differentiate that. And in fact, OnePlus they they're a smaller company. They have to be communicating with Marquez now, right? Absolutely. He's a he's a giant <laughs> he's a giant tech channel. Of course he's of course he needs to be contacted by them. Yeah. Okay. All right, Super Chat's got to catch up on. The other thing was Zone of Tech Copyright Strike, which I feel like uh, we're going to talk about this whole stream, but let me let me catch up real quick. No, I'm using OBS, not Wirecast. Apple's improving Maps and Photos to match Google. When do you think it will improve Siri to Google level? I don't think Apple sees Siri as the same purpose as Google sees the Google Assistant. Google sees the Google Assistant as a way, this is a mouthful, uh, as a way to get everyone to use Google Search. Siri is just a companion, a helpful assistant and um, the, whether you use Siri or not, it doesn't really change Apple's revenue. Google is very focused on the Google Assistant and puts much, and puts much more work towards it because I'm on it. Siri. The more people who use, <laughs> scared me. The more people who use, um, the more people who use the Google Assistant, the more money they make. That's Google's primary source of revenue is Google Search. So they're always trying to get more and more people to use Google Search. The more people they can get to do that, the more it matters. Screen Castify if OBS becomes too problematic. It may it may be an OBS problem with the internet, but it also can just be an internet unreliable problem. It's completely it's completely possible. Linus Tech Tips, how could we forget? All of the all of the freaking YouTube requests. Everyone wants to talk about another tech channel. So anyway, uh, let's briefly talk about the copyright strike situation. I see the super chats. I will address them when I can. I apologize if there's lag. I will try to fix that in the next one. Um, we could either lower it to 720 or uh, lower the bit rate a bit more. So we'll see. Anyway, the, pro the problem I'm having with the zone of tech situation is that no, the content of the video itself is not copyright infringement. But the email he got about the copyright infringement did not say that was the problem. And they did try to explain this, and I and I understand it's weird for people to understand because this is a, a new way to get a copyright strike, and we haven't really seen it be a problem on tech channels. Most tech channels never really have any reason to get copyright strikes. It's much more common on music channels and movie review channels, which we run as well, and we have a bit more experience with copyright strikes and copyright claims. What I do know is that I've been I've received copyright claims, not strikes, which is simply Apple gets the ad revenue from the video um, that supposedly has their content on it. I've received copyright claims from Apple several times. And every single time we get a copyright claim, we file to dispute it. We say this is commentary. This is not a reposting. We credited them. This is not a copyright uh, violation. Every single time we try to dispute an Apple copyright claim, it gets approved. Apple says, you're right. Our bad. Didn't mean to, didn't mean to put a copyright claim on that. You're OK. That's happened many times on our channel, which is why I'm looking at this from a perspective of Apple has never been a problem with copyright strikes and copyright claims on YouTube. That's not a uh, that's not a running issue I've had with Apple. There are companies out there that go nuts on copyright strikes and copyright claims. There is cha there are companies that do that, and YouTube has a very very poor system in place for people who want to do copyright strikes, but also how can creators be protected from false copyright strikes. YouTube's terribly anti-creator for that kind of stuff. But companies like Universal, basically, if you use any footage from a Universal film, they will they will take down the video, they will strike it, it'll be gone. Apple's not a company to do that. The difference here is that with Zone of Tech, as explained in the email, they were upset of the activities it was encouraging, not the video itself. And we can go around all day and argue on whether or not the, the video explaining how to steal a developer beta account, which is beyond Apple's terms of service. They're not okay with that. That is stealing. That is piracy. And I don't think there's any debate on that. Most people aren't against that. Um, they understand that. They're just saying the video itself does not deserve a strike um, because the video itself is, uh, is not copyrighted content from Apple. You know, Zone of Tech made that video himself. He has a very nice channel. He's accumulated a wonderful... A uh, assortment of, of uh, subscribers and makes lots of high quality content, 
but the video itself is not Apple's copyrighted stuff. They explained in the email, he went over this in his own video, they are technically with YouTube's policy. So if you want to get mad about this, keep in mind that is a third party company that represents Apple, not Apple himself. Tim Cook doesn't know anything about this. He doesn't care. The people at Apple aren't the ones issuing copyright claims and copyright strikes. This weird company that con contacted Zone of Tech, um, SIA of some kind, it has some weird name, they go out and, and file copyright claims and copyright strikes, and then someone else from Apple may come and dismiss it, or they'll look into it further. It, it YouTube's got a very broken system. It's almost like it would be nice if we have a YouTube competitor, right? Wouldn't it be nice if someone could do YouTube better than what YouTube's doing right now? Uh, yeah, that would be nice. In fact, it would be better if we didn't have other social media outlets trying to make their own thing when YouTube can't even work. So anyway, I see the super chats. Don't worry, I'll get back into them in a second. My point is in the email, they do explain whether, whether or not you think it's fair that they are allowed, other companies are allowed to issue copyright strikes if they can prove that in the video there is not necessarily copyrighted content, copyright act, cop infringement activities. Okay, so let me let me uh, let me demonstrate a different example. Okay, landscape mobile. Yes, yes. IGTV could fix very little things and become a huge platform. They could add like, put me in charge of Instagram for like, and give me like four wishes. If I could grant four wishes to IGTV, we could totally we could totally get YouTube scared. But anyway, um, the, they explained in the email that no, the video is not copyrighted content, but it does explain how to steal illegally Apple's copyrighted content. Now, similarly, let me paint another situation for you. Thank you for the super chats. I will address those. Um, here's another super chat. Uh, here's another example. If you uploaded a video, let's and keep in mind he is a big channel. This means he accumulates a lot of views. He accumulates a lot of attention. Smaller channels showing you how to steal a developer beta and, and not have to pay for it. They're they're going to be very hard to find. He is a big channel. He's got a lot of eyes on him. So let's let's compare this to a movie review channel. Let's say someone big, a big movie review channel like Screen Junkies. Okay, that that's someone a lot of people watch. If Screen Junkies uploaded a video that explained here is the links and here are the buttons necessary in order to download Infinity War for free before the Blu-rays come out. So you don't have to pay for the movie. You don't have to go buy it out. Here's a video explaining how you can watch it illegally for free. Now, Marvel did not upload, uh, Screen Junkies did not upload Infinity War. They just showed you how to get Infinity War for free. Marvel's not going to tolerate that. They're not going to leave that video up. This is a big channel. They're representing a lot of people. They see them as an influencer. And if they can make the case to YouTube, hey, they are showing infringement activities, as the email described, we are allowed to take it down. You can argue whether or not that's okay, but that's how YouTube's policies work. I don't like YouTube's policies. You guys know that. I'm very fed up with the way YouTube runs things. They do a dozen things wrong, and it grows every day. This is one of the things that YouTube allows. So it's really not at the fault of Apple because Apple doesn't really have a department that goes around striking YouTube videos all day. They have a third party that does it in Apple's best interest. Apple can dismiss it or release strikes. My best, best example, uh, my best, best advice to Zone of Tech, do not take this to court. Do not try to fight this. Do not try to fight this strike. Admit that you were showing people how to steal something and that's not okay. Apple said, basically, you know, pulled a, can we copy strike zone of tech? They basically pulled a, can we take this video down? And by the way, it doesn't matter if it came out, when it came out, four years ago, two years ago, it doesn't matter. The, the, the crime still exists and they're not seeing, is there a way we can like sue this guy? Is there a way we can uh, take this video down, ask him to take this video down? That's not how SIA is working. SIA is just some company that's running around the internet saying, that's a way to steal Apple's uh, paid content. So strike it. Take that video down. That that was the first. That was the first thing they could do. Uh, they they weren't really interested in contacting him because this this company. I have no idea who they are, but they're probably just scanning the internet like like the robots from the Matrix, just like looking at things to destroy and basically just saying. Uh, that one harms Apple's best interest. Like I said, I've been I've gotten copyright claimed by Apple. 
and it's been released before. So I don't think that Apple's one of these complicated companies that runs into, uh, if you talk about their content or you upload their, it's, or Nintendo, Nintendo's worse. You can't show any gameplay. We're editing a Nintendo video right now, and we're very skeptical because you got to be careful with Nintendo if you don't um, if you don't become a part of their monetization program. They will claim the video, and you don't get to make any money off of it. So, uh, it's a, it's it's a, it's a messy situation. But Apple's not one of those companies to be a stickler about copyright issues. Um, so I'm just saying they looked at this as what is the quickest way we can take it down. There's a way we can take it down. There's do it. Let's do it. So YouTube opened the gate. Sia walked through it. Sia is in Apple's best interest. Apple really has no play here. There's no one at Apple that cares about this situation. Anyway, um, so that that's all I have thoughts on the matter. I know you may want more uh, in-depth video on it, but I'm tired of talking about other people in my channel. So let me let me answer some of the super chat. Which 10 case do you use now? Leather too sip, slippery? None. Caseless, dude. Joseph super chatted. Thank you very much. Uh, no comment, but I appreciate the donation. Scott Sullivan says, I always win when I dispute or appeal universal footage. Have never gotten a strike. If you want the copy-paste thing I use for those things, just ask. It's okay. Um, it, it will depend on how you edited the clip. We've, we've uh, on our movie review channel, we've gotten strikes from Universal before. So it can happen if not edited correctly or if not lifted from the proper source. Anyway, um... Do you pay for the developer account? We do. We've wanted developer betas and stuff uh, for as long as, <laughs> even before, in fact, that it a tech channel. It's it's cheaper than Amazon Prime, so it's not that expensive. So we're, we're, we we go ahead and pay for it, and we make our money back thanks to YouTube anyway. Epic from Creator of the Week says, "What's up, Drew? How's it going? Just saying hi. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you like the new setup. Anyway, Nintendo is some whole other. They are." Strike me down and you uh, will become more powerful than... Yeah, $99 a year. It's not It's not terribly expensive. But um, he didn't read full email. I mean, I... Are you talking about me or Zone Attack? I don't know. I guess we won't know. Giveaways think they're bad because only a few people benefit from the majority and people get upset if they don't get the thing. That's... It, it's, it's as successful as uh, winning the lottery. You know, everyone buys into it. One guy wins. That's, that's how giveaways work. Um... Every stream countdown besides stating uh, the minutes left. Oh, I'm just getting I'm just getting things set up. We'll see. This was also before the public beta was available for the people bringing that up. Back when he made this video, there was no public beta. You had to, in order to get a beta operating system, you had to have a developer account. So Apple just said, hey, this guy's showing how to steal uh, stuff that we charge money for. How do we take it down? They take it down. It's It's that simple. Whether or not, like, the, the copyrighted content is not the problem here. The, the problem is he demonstrated how to steal their content, which with YouTube's current policies, that is allowed. You are allowed to strike a channel for that. So you got to blame YouTube and you got to blame this third party that works for Apple. I, I, I don't really see how it's Apple's fault themselves. They're protecting their best interests, and I don't really see the fault in that. Yes, I will move into Linus Tech Tips. I'm seeing all those. I'm seeing all those. When will they include HomeKit in their shortcuts? I I'm not in charge of these things. I don't know. Unstoppable. I appreciate the super chat, but how will you choose a giveaway winner? At random. We go hashtag Taylor's of Network on Twitter and Instagram. We pick one person at random. What lighting do you use uh, on your video recording sessions? We just have these big lights. We talk about them on Taylor's of Talks. I just point them at me. Um, ever has the power of God and anime on their side. Yes. I love that vine. Is the only uh, worth it if you do something with it and make apps and all that? Yes. That's all I'm saying is, uh, see, I've watched several people's videos on this. I think a lot of people keep assuming that Apple did this, where this is so many other people's problems. This is YouTube having a terrible copyright protection program um, that's, that's always been wrong and, and it's never been right. Um, it's also this third party that uh, Zone of Tech brought up in his video, acts in Apple's best interest is not actually Apple. They look for things. If people want to dispute the claim or, or go back on things, they show it to Apple. Apple says, no, they're good. That's happened to us several times. That's all I'm saying. Apple has not been a problematic company in regards to um, copyright issues. Uh, front page text said that um, it, it's the equivalent of someone ripping a Blu-ray DVD or going going to someone's house and watching 
uh, the movie that they pirated. As in, like, he doesn't need to be punished for that. To me, the viewers of... Uh, to me, the people who, who are the v viewers of Zone of Tech who are getting the free beta, those are the people watching the video. They think they found the source with the YouTube video. They're, they're looking at it as this is the guy ripping the Blu-ray because he's the one showing everyone how to do it. And YouTube has policies in place that allow companies to step in and strike, even if you're not uploading copyrighted content, infringement activities qualifies for a strike. That's, that's YouTube's decision, all right? Apple pays the company, it's on them. I agree that Apple has no idea, though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, I'm sure they do pay them, or they they probably ask for money, and knowing Apple, they likely get it, because they're like, yeah, we don't want people doing random stuff. But how much money do they really make? It's not like, um, it's not like there's a bunch of copyrighted video. I mean, what can you steal from Apple and re-upload? The keynote? They don't monetize that. Like, Apple doesn't, put the Worldwide Developers Conference on YouTube and put ad breaks on it. They don't show sponsors. So re-uploading, it's not like they're losing money from this. This is actually something that they would be losing money from. It's weird that it's four years old, but uh, regardless, this company this company that works for Apple is probably just bored and they don't know what to do. <laughs> they're probably just looking for things to strike and they're like, eh, hey, that we can make the case that that's stealing money from Apple directly, right? And... YouTube's like, eh, yeah, I guess you could say that. So strike qualifies. Company literally has a page on Apple's website. <laughs> yeah, they're definitely a subdivision. All I'm saying is that Apple's marketing or engineering, the the Tim Cooks don't know what's going on here. That's it's not a priority to them. This is this is a mess up of someone at a much lower level than anyone who works at corporate Apple. All right. And yes, I think that this opens the door for a lot of things. I don't really understand people who's, who are saying that uh, counterclaiming it for Zone of Tech. That is another big problem. Uh, YouTube went ahead and did the counterclaim on their own, um, but qualifies what they asked for as a strike, which is infringement activities. Um, see, the, the, the issue with this whole mess is that YouTube set up policies for what constitutes or what deserves a copyright strike but then they themselves decide it's not fair so why is the policy like that youtube why do you allow that if you disagree with it first of all they shouldn't that if you get a copyright strike on your channel best thing you can do is really just back off whether like you're not going to win a court case with apple if, whoever, whoever's whoever's trying to sue who the, you you really don't want to go down that rabbit hole if you uh, my advice for zone of tech if you have any type of content out there that may may show how to steal developer betas or how to get things without paying for them, take it down, change the title, try to bury that, and just go easy. Go easy if you get a copyright strike. Just be on eggshells, all right? You, you don't want to break anything. You don't want to crack anything. Don't try to fight this, okay? It may be annoying, but it's way beyond us. It's way beyond us, beyond us creators. Even if you were a... 5 million subscriber channel. This is way beyond us to take to the court. Judge judge is not going to understand this. He's going to look at it and say, so you uploaded a video showing how to pirate content. Yeah. Okay, then you lose. It's that, it'll, like, it, it'll, be, in, it'll be over like that. So, yeah. What, what's John saying? Bottom line, if videos are going to be taken down for showing pirating, that needs to be a YouTube policy. YouTube needs to take that, uh, take, uh, that stuff down, not Apple. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, in the videos um, that I've been seeing about the Zone of Tech situation, I still think too many people are thinking this is an Apple problem. It's more of how bad YouTube's policies are because they allow for the strike but then counteract the strike without permission from the creator. Zone of Tech didn't want to counter the strike. YouTube just did it on their own. Why YouTube? I don't know. In, in, other, in other news, uh, YouTube is unsubscribing random... Uh, uh, Talos of Tech subscribers. We got that to look forward to as well. Wouldn't it be nice if they had a competitor? Wouldn't it be nice if they could uh, be put in their place by some other large company? That would be fun. That would be fun. People who do pirate movies. I, I would say that if you do pirate movies, if you do steal things, just understand what it is. Understand that while it may not be physical, pirating a movie online is no different than stealing a candy bar from a convenience store. Just because it's not physical doesn't change the fact that people work for it. That thing costs money. 
Uh, most people have to pay for that in order to watch it. You found a way to not pay for it. No different than grabbing a candy bar from a 7-Eleven, putting it in your pocket, and walking out. It's the same thing. Just understand, if you can understand that it's that and still do it, I mean, I, I disagree with you, but I, I just hope you know that. I haven't met many people who agree that it's the same thing and still do it. Most people who say it's okay are people who say, no, it's different because I can't afford this. I only pirate it because I didn't want to pay for it. It's like, what? Or I can't pay for it. I don't have the money for it. Or sometimes people say, um, oh, there you go. Fastest Boys just said YouTube unsubbed me midstream. There you go. YouTube's not happy with me, I guess. Um, did someone, yeah, just looking at Super Chat. Is this the new camera? This is uh, plugged into OBS and be able to stream this way. Yes, I wish IGTV was a, uh, was a legitimate YouTube competitor. It is not, absolutely not. Um, but they, it feels like they're not trying to. It's, they're not even making an effort. <laughs> um, it's like cutting the candy bar up and getting a piece. No, it's not. It's a, it's a whole product. If anything, the movie costed more to make that candy bar. So you could equivalent, let, let's just make things easier. The $5 bin at Walmart. You take one of those DVDs, you put it in your coat, you walk out. Same thing. Pirating that, no difference, okay? As long as you can understand that. And you're okay with that? I think you're messed up. You're stealing from people. A lot of people get paid. A lot of people make products and sell them, and that's how they make their livelihood. You're making that harder. So don't do it. Piracy is not a good thing. Same with Adblock. You are hurting the people you are, are enjoying. You're taking away money from people that you enjoy watching. So, yeah, it's just, please don't do it. It's, it's not good. London Bridge says, YouTube just unsubbed me to your channel. Goodness, that's annoying. It's, it's just not, yes, vertical video is not practical. We've, we've beat that horse to death. Anyway, now that no one's spamming it anymore, let's talk about Linus Tech Tips. How about that fun conversation? So he uploaded this follow-up video on how, guess what? The iMac Pro is hard to repair. What? Says who? Anyway, um, I basically summed up all my thoughts on the Linus Tech Tips situation on Twitter because I think it's such an easy response that it doesn't deserve a whole video. If I make a whole video, I'm going to get 900,000 angry PC builders on my channel who just tell me to kill myself. I'm done with that. I don't want to put up with that, so that's why I don't want to make a video with him in the thumbnail. I may tack it on to the end of another video, but I don't I don't want to put a video with Linus in the thumbnail again and get a bunch of views like that. I'm just done with getting bombarded by annoying channels, okay? I don't want that to happen. However, I summed it up on Twitter with to the people who don't follow me on Twitter who don't know what went down. People seem to really like this tweet. Most people aren't really counter-argument, <laughs> providing much of a, a counter-argument to it. Um basically sums up this way. If someone was asking Linus Tech Tips, uh, hey, I'm thinking about getting an iMac Pro. Is that a good computer? His response essentially is going to be something along the lines of, I mean, processor-wise and GPU-wise, it's okay, but if you take that thing apart, there is like no service in place for it. Like if you break it and while you're opening it, uh, they, they have like no support system in place to fix it. Like there's nothing you can do. You'll, they'll just tell you to buy a new one to which I think the most common response would still be, okay, I won't open it. It's an all in one people who buy an iMac pro know what they're getting into. They're not buying an iMac pro thinking I'm going to open this up. I'm going to upgrade the Ram. I'm going to update the storage. No. People buy iMac Pros because they don't like building PCs. The whole purpose of an all-in-one computer. And the reason I'm so defensive about the iMac Pro is that I've loved it. I've used it so much. We've edited so much content on it. It's been a beast. It's been so helpful. I love this computer. And what I love about it is it appeals to my demographic. My demographic being the type of person who likes to just get a, uh, get a computer, plug it in, and it starts working. If you want to build a computer, if you want to tinker with it, you want to upgrade it, you want to repair it if something goes bad, you want to open it up and do stuff like that, you don't want to go through Apple or you want to fix it yourself and you want to take it apart, film the insides of it, yeah, you're welcome to do that. There's about 80,000 companies that will provide products that allow that. 
the iMac Pro is not supposed to be that. That was never the intention of the iMac Pro. Now, some admittance here. Well, I'll say, yes, Linus is correct. And you guys know I agreed with Snazzy Labs on the vase amount situation. There is not many people who work at Apple stores who know how to work on iMac Pros very much. Is that... Okay. <laughs> if you would have just dropped your iMac Pro, again, incredibly rare situation. A desktop device, not mobile. Not We're not talking about a laptop here. And you want to talk about stupid laptops designs? Pixelbook puts glass on the laptop for no reason. That would just break anyway. Anyway, this is a desktop. Something you unbox, you put on the desk. That's it. If you just dropped it, very rare situation. I'd, I'd say less than 1% of iMac Pro users actually drop their iMac Pro. This is not what the product should be handling at all. If you broke the glass on that, they would work on it. They would give you a new one or they would repair it. The only reason there were all these complications with the iMac Pro rebuilding process, repairing process with Linus Tech Tips, is that they themselves opened it up intentionally. And my issue with the whole Linus Tech Tips situation is he's complaining about it like this should affect, the, the iMac Pro is a terrible product because we can't do this with it. We can't open it up. We can't take it apart. Also, uh, they, they couldn't put it back together, which kind of shocks me about this group that has the confidence to take apart an iMac Pro and say they're going to break it down piece by piece. And yeah, we, we got smart guys who work for us. We have sponsors who can afford a pretty large staff. We can fix this thing ourselves. And then they can't. They have this giant company. It's not giant, but they've got this crew of people at a studio that say, yeah, we can take apart an iMac Pro and put it back together. And then they don't. And then they break the display. And I almost wonder, like, I mean, they're really gaining more from breaking this thing than they are just using it, right? It's almost like they knew Apple would not have a support system in place for something that's not expected to happen. If you want to compare it to some other company that builds PCs or makes PCs and, and they can upgrade parts and they can upgrade components, that's because that's what that company does. That's what that company is devoted to. Their whole company is just dedicated to making professional class desktops or towers or all-in-ones. And if there's any problem with it, that's their go-to issue. That's their mainstream product. This is not that at all. This is on several levels not supposed to happen with an iMac Pro. And on several instances, Apple still is just going to tell you buy a new one. Sometimes people prefer design. Sometimes people prefer aesthetics. And that's why there are smartphones. That's why smartphones exist is because people liked being able to only get what they needed. I, I don't need my phone to have a billion buttons on it. I don't need all this customization. I just want my phone to work. That's what made the iPhone 8 sell very well. That desire for things to just work and just work reliably is why there's a market for people who like the Talos, uh, who like the, <laughs> sorry, I was reading Talos, who like the iMac Pro. People who just want it to work were professionals. There's video editors out there like me. I don't want to build a PC. I'm sure I could learn to. I'm sure it's not that hard. You could explain to me. Four-year-olds can do it if I'm over their shoulder the whole time. Yeah, it's super easy. Um, you could also. I could also cut my own hair. I could also save money by not paying super cuts to cut my hair. But am I going to enjoy that process? Is that something I feel like I need to learn about and I need to be good at? I personally don't. I, I, I've got money. I make a pretty good living. I would rather pay a professional to do that. I, I don't want to take time out of my day to learn how to be good at cutting my hair. That's my opinion on building PCs. Is It's like, you want to build your PC, you want to customize everything, great, that's fine for you. But not everyone does. That's, that's the sheep mentality. If you want to talk about blind, uh, one-sided arguments, it's people saying, my way of building PCs is right, this is better, this is the way to do it, and anyone who disagrees with me is wrong. And ironically, that's a large chunk of channels that are dedicated to building PCs or tearing down phones or are upset that an iPhone doesn't have a removable battery are people who insist their way is better. And if a company doesn't do it their way, it's wrong. Keep in mind, I'm talking about the iMac Pro here and defending it from a standpoint of this is a product I like. And I'm trying to say it's not a bad product. 
I'm not going and saying all these companies that build PCs or build towers, they're all wrong. You all need to make all-in-ones. You all need to make iMac Pro competitors. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying the iMac Pro has an audience. Linus is criticizing it for not appealing to an audience it was never meant to appeal to. Apple's working on a modular Mac Pro. They know the iMac Pro is not made for this. They know the modular Mac, they know the iMac Pro is not made for being torn apart or opened up and tinkered with. That's why they probably didn't put too much time and attention and money towards the repair program for if you open it up and break the glass. If, keep in mind, if someone out there, very rarely, very hard for this to actually happen, if someone out there somehow, how are you, do, you moving it across a parking lot? Dropped an iMac Pro, Apple still would have fixed it because they didn't open it up. That's an accident. Because they tinkered with it, now they are liable for things that go wrong. All right? I'm not telling everyone out there that custom-built PCs are terrible or no one should buy custom-built PCs. Yet it's the other side of the argument, people who are upset with the iMac Pro, that all come onto the channel that likes things to just work, that like things to be reliable and don't want to build everything themselves. It's that side of the channel that comes over here and says, you're wrong, you have to do it my way. If it's not my way, it's incorrect. It's, it's the equivalent of me... If I bought a PC, and I've bought several, if I bought a PC and I complained that it didn't have AirDrop or that it didn't have like iMessage support or that it doesn't have things that I value in a computer. I, I use a lot of Macs. I enjoy my iMacs. And I, I enjoy that the features they have on them. They turn on. They just work. I don't have to have a Microsoft account. I can just have a dedicated password for this machine. I like AirDrop. I like having optimized video editing apps on my Mac. My whole channel comes from this is what I like. Not, this is what you should do, which is what I don't like about so many of the other channels out there that are dedicated to, it needs to be repairable, I need to be able to open it, I need to replace individual parts, and if I take it apart and break it, Apple is responsible for its repairs. I, I honestly just don't agree. I'm saying, if a company asks you to use a product in a certain way, and you don't use it in that way, I think that gives them an opt out of, okay, we don't have to service it anymore. We are not required to have a repair program for the customers who are not using it the way we asked you to. There's a way to use a product. Similarly, if I fill the lawnmower with mashed potatoes, I don't think the lawnmower company is responsible to fixing it. They can look at that, and I, res and I support businesses' right to say, uh, don't do that, that was dumb, and no, we're not going to fix that. We are going to spend our money and our time on working on people who actually have problems. We're going to have a report, uh, repair system and a support system for people who have legitimate issues, like Snazzy Labs. You guys know I don't disagree with Snazzy. Like, the vase mount adapter thing completely messed up. That product is destroyed. It's an accessory to the iMac Pro. It doesn't make me hate the iMac Pro. But do not buy the vase mount adapter. I don't know why that exists. It's not a reason for me to hate my iMac Pro, though. I'm not going to buy an iMac Pro, use it to its full advantage and enjoy it, and then find out, oh, but if I want to mount this to a wall, then it's a bad product. Because there's not many other powerful all-in-ones like this that have that option anyway. What are you going to do? Surface Studio? That can't do VESA at all. Like, uh, some people even got the VESA mount adapter and got it to work. Sa uh, sadly, Snazzy just is getting the worst ones I get. I still agree. There is not a repair system in place for people who break and open intentionally their iMac Pro. Linus Tech Tips keeps trying to assume uh, mistakes happen. We are the normal guy. We, want, we don't want to be treated like YouTubers. We want to get the normal customer experience and then shows a video of himself stepping on the display, intentionally breaking it for a video thumbnail. You're not the average consumer. The average, cons the average customer experience is they won't be opening it, right? <sighs> Let me read some of the chat message here. Uh, try buying a new Honda Civic, change the cam, add a turbo, blow the clutch, and head gasket, and take it back to the dealer to get it fixed and see how that works with non-factory part put in. Yeah, that, I, I guess he's complaining more because he's, he wants to go to authorized Apple repair shops, like third-party ones, and he's wondering why they can't get parts from Apple. You're right. They don't have a support system in place. But if you're going to complain about that, 
for the reason as to why the iMac Pro is not worth it? You're just wrong. I disagree. I'm not... I, the, the sad thing is the whole comment section, his whole audience, of course, agrees with him because his whole audience is just, uh, can I upgrade the RAM? No, you can't. <laughs> Stupid product. Anyone who buys this is now an idiot. Even though in his actual iMac Pro review, he did give it credit for the processor, the GPU, what it has in it for the price is actually pretty fair, pretty decently priced. But they couldn't, they couldn't stop there. They couldn't stop there. They were like, you know, this Mac, it's, it's, it's expensive and it's not ungradable, but for what you get out of it, it's a pretty good deal. That was too easy. Break the screen. They knew there was no repair system in place. They're sponsored by iFixit. They're literally sponsored by a company that is mad that they have to pay extra for Apple repair programs. That they they want to grow their company. They they want to they want to change the way Apple works with more repair laws. There's certain times I agree there needs to be right to repair, but sometimes there are products that we expect to work in a certain seamless way and hold up a certain level of design and. In order to uphold that certain level of design, repairability takes a takes a shot lower. And this is not just Apple. This is Samsung. This is OnePlus. This is Google. There's all types of companies that sacrifice repairability for the sake of, but people want more features. People want better accessories. People want more features to be part of this. Buy something else then. The iMac Pro... If you don't think it's good for repairing or opening up, don't complain if you can't open it up and you can't repair it. That's, that's, not, that's not what it was made for. I will not buy a PC and complain that it, it takes up a lot of space. It's loud. I don't care about RGB. I don't need all these. I, I have to plug in like three different power cables for a PC and monitor and all that. iMac Pro, I can plug in just the one. I'm good. One outlet, low powered, quiet, great built in speakers, low profile on desk. Those are the things I care about as a user. I do not force them on you. I do not say everyone needs to buy this. What those channels do, enforce it. I like having custom built PCs. I like repairability. I like having customization of which monitor I get. And if you don't do that, you're wrong. You're wrong to do so. You're a terrible consumer because you like Apple for appealing to that audience. I'm honestly glad someone does because no no one really does it these days. Samsung's not in the pro market. Microsoft's barely in the pro market. Their $400 tablet has USB-C, but not their $3,000 desktop. You want to, Dave Lee, want to complain about CPUs all day? Complain about Microsoft. Yeah. <laughs> OnePlus didn't, doesn't include headphones with the purchase, but they include a headphone jack. I can still listen to the headphone. I can still listen to music right out of the box of an iPhone. There's a clear line between accidental break and slamming it with a hammer. Exactly. Uh, I don't know if you were for or against me, but Linus is definitely in the hammer stage. Apple says, don't open it. They literally put stickers on the circuit board so that they can check if you've tampered with it. They did. It was obvious. It was. It was well known. <laughs> If you're if I, I hate I hate to make I hate to make this comment because it sounds kind of dis disrespectful, but plenty of his audience has been disrespectful enough. And by the way, guys, I don't want anyone out there to go onto his channel and try to dislike every comment or tell them all they're stupid. They're not stupid people, okay? They're not they're not terrible people. I don't want my audience going over there and saying, You're all idiots, you're all idiots. Tell us of text right, tell us of text right. That makes you guys worse. You make me look bad. I, I don't care for you guys as much as the haters. But I kinda wanna say like if you feel confident enough that you're your own tech tips company that can take apart computers and you can put them back together no problem even if they're an all-in-one you're like oh yeah we can open up an iMac Pro no problem put it back together clearly you're not qualified an authorized retailer would not drop the display while putting something is this a giant like is this hard to drop it's a 20, 27 inch piece of glass. Is, is that difficult to hold on to? Your, your repair people literally can't even put back a machine. And now you're mad that Apple doesn't want to correct your stupid mistake. All this is on you. 
Okay. I, I mean, like, I, I don't mean to sound so conspiracy theory, but it honestly does sound kind of believable that iFixit sponsor these guys. And iFixit definitely doesn't like companies that make repairing difficult. They're getting nothing but views and, and clicks and, and watch time for making a whole series out of their crappy repair team. Their repair team can't put a display back on a computer. And in the email, they explain the power supply isn't working correctly. And then, I mean, it, we have evidence enough that in the recording of the video, they intentionally reenacted. They reenacted the dropping process. They took their display, hung it over the iMac Pro, dropped it, added the stupid spark effect. Uh, that's, that's not professional. You guys are not the average consumer. You're not getting the average customer experience because the average customer would not make that kind of mistake. They wouldn't be in that place in the first place. iMac Pro buyers, small percentage of the market. People who drop their iMac Pros, even smaller percentage of the market. People who intentionally open them up, even smaller, even small, 0.1, 0. 0.0001%. On top of that, people who also aren't good at opening up their iMac. Even smaller, 0.00001% of the population will have a terrible experience with the iMac Pro. Therefore, it's a bad product. Therefore, Apple's a terrible company. Now I can upload I hate Apple videos. Ugh. Let me ca let me catch up on the Super Jets here. I'm sorry. Ollie Gaming says, everything Apple Pro is a pirate. He wants you to illegally download iOS beta. Yes, uh, he's in trouble too. If Zone of Tech can get copyright strikes for what he got a copyright strike for everything apple pro should definitely go back and delete those videos or change the titles or just privatize them just he's subject to get strikes everything apple pro should definitely be worried i'm glad i don't do that type of content because i don't think it's i don't think it's smart you shouldn't go public about how you steal things because that might come back to bite you in the butt connected tech talk says i just wanted to say hi in the first 2.0 live stream so hey there hey thanks for the super chat Appreciate it. Uh, let me see if I missed any more. Did you guys super chat at all? But I play Minecraft on my iMac Pro in the bus. <laughs> I'm sorry. You're going to have to buy a Nintendo Switch. I apologize. So he had the iFixit guide that doesn't play well for the iFixit uh, community, given they don't know how to put together a computer, yet they have the confidence to take it apart. Uh, I can't. The hypocrisy is the funniest thing because people always come to my channel and, and, and tell me, Drew, you're so poorly, poorly researched and you don't look things up. And I make mistakes sometimes. In my last video, I forgot that there's a cellular version of the 2018 iPad. There's a cellular version. And I was like, oh, shoot. We uploaded that. Forgot about that. Oh, yeah. Viper super chatted fire emojis. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Viper. Um, and people come over here and they're like, oh, poorly researched and stuff. And they come on here and, and say things like, Drew, you need to accept that Apple makes mistakes sometimes. Apple's not a perfect company. At, you need to acknowledge this sometimes. It hurts your credibility. If you guys knew my channel, if the people commenting that knew who I was, they would understand I rip Apple apart all the time. There's plenty of things they do wrong. Plenty. Even an Apple sheep, even a fanboy can admit when Apple makes mistakes left and right. In fact, I probably complain more about Apple on this channel than anyone because that's all we want to talk about in the first place. <laughs> uh, but what kills me about the Linus Tech Tip situation is that I will not buy a product, use it in a way it's not intended to be used, and complain about it. It would be like me saying the Surface Go is a terrible product because it cannot run Final Cut. That's not fair. That's not like, that is a criticism that makes switching it harder, but that's not like a, it is a bad product because this. Linus is directly expecting the iMac Pro to be treated like it's some tower PC. When we all know 90% of Apple's revenue and all 90% of that company is dedicated to mobile, they're all dedicated to Apple Watches, iPhones, iPads, MacBooks, iMacs, on top of that, iMac Pros are such a low priority. And I cannot, I cannot just agree that the iMac Pro is a terrible product because of 
0.00001% of the population won't have a repair process in order. Anyone out there who thinks they can take apart an all-in-one as closed up as an iMac Pro, you need to be confident in your repairability. If you're comfortable with thinking, you know how difficult it is to open these things up with all these suction, you literally have to just rip it open, get knives against this aluminum and glass. If you're confident enough to do that, be confident enough to put it back together. Okay? Anyway. Anyway. I, I know you guys were spamming all about Linus Tech Tips, so I hope that rant was enough for you. Between all this drama, I would like to do is say thank you for staying true to yourself. I always enjoy your content and love to relate to you so much. Grew up with Apple as well. Keep doing what you do. Thank you very much. I appreciate the super chat. Hats off to your name was Svenja, whatever, <laughs> whatever. Thank you for the largest super chat of today. Really, really appreciate it. Yeah. Um, yeah, we can move on. I'm, I'm I'm sick of the Linus Tech Tips topic. I'm, I'm a I'm, I don't want to make a video about it. I know what'll happen if I do. I know exactly how that type of audience responds to anyone who disagrees with them, and that's the funny part is I'm the one who gets called sheep. I'm the one who gets called blind. I'm the one who gets called bias when I'm the one just saying, this is for a certain type of customer. You're treating it as everyone as you would treat everything else and i'm not saying everything else is wrong i'm just saying you have your pc towers and we have our all-in-ones don't complain that they're not the other thing that's all what's the status of the amazon situation if you didn't know we're using it they they got us the package right now cam link is being used as we speak yeah, we do have a female audience. They're not a large majority of our audience, but they're there. We got we got some female viewers out there. We appreciate the ladies watching. Glad to see Randy's in the chat. I watch Linus Tech Tips, and on some things I don't agree with him, but on a custom PC, his videos are cool, but I'm Apple Sheep, and I don't agree with most of the time. But however, I like to see the other side. I think that when he's not complaining about some Apple iMac Pro break-apart thing and the... the I, I'm I, he's fine with that as a, as a PC building channel it's great but when they leech over to the other side of people who just want things to work they don't want to build things they they just want to plug it in and have it start working when they start leeching over into those reviews that's where I think credibility reason logic all just drops down to zero I can't stand it when, when he makes videos about monitors and gaming PCs and stuff like that I think he's great does a great job. I, I think he's good at staying true to his audience. That's what I'm trying to do here. I don't want to become a YouTuber react channel where I just react to Dave Lee's I hate Apple video. Do we want to talk about that? Uh, I can expand on that more. Or now react to Linus Tech Tips. Now react to Zone of Tech. Now react to this. I know I would get a lot more views. To me, it's like the easy way out, but it's not the right way out. Okay. Anyway, Parallel Muffin says, <laughs> that's a fun name. Are there any features you would like to see on the Apple TV, like maybe seeing your iMessages on the TV? Um, yeah, I would, uh, I, I would like if a little red dot showed up maybe when you had a notification, you could swipe down. Though, speaking of me criticizing Apple, my Apple TV situation has been horrible. The Apple TV remote is glitched beyond repair. And uh, I, I'm probably going to upload a rant video on that. We'll see all the, we'll see all my haters out there talk about how biased I am when I talk about how terrible an Apple product is and that no one should buy it. <laughs> I've I've been having a terrible time with my Apple TV remote, but yeah, I would like it if when you're watching a, a TV show or something, a little red dot appears. If you got a notification, then you can swipe down on the remote if you want to see the notification. If not, the red dot will just go away. Um, Dave Lee is the. Uh, he, I've generally liked his content. Very professional, very straightforward, very high quality. Just, he makes good stuff. Dave Lee is not a bad YouTuber. I'm not trying to say I hate Dave Lee in any way. Uh, Dave Lee's a great YouTuber. Though the I Hate Apple video that so many of you like desperately were just like, Drew, watch this. Drew, watch this. Drew, watch this. Um, so baseless. So like, 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 just like Linus Tech Tips. You're going to hate a whole company, a whole product line out of the tiniest of situations. And most of it was just, I thought he was going to go the line of like, I need an SD card slot, and I liked MagSafe. It wasn't even that type of video. 
The ones we've seen a hundred billion times. You're mad that the MacBook Pro doesn't have the Ethernet port. Good for you. Okay, yeah. I, I was expecting that. I finally watched it because everyone was asking me to watch it. By the way, when everyone asks me to watch it, it makes me want to not watch it, but I eventually do it. Um, so I watched a Dave, Dave Lee video, and I'm like, so he's just mad that they haven't updated their processors? That's it? You're like, they're late to refreshing this year's iMac. I hate Apple. Upload. Like, <laughs> that's enough? I could make a whole... You know what? Can I, can I compare that to something? Can I compare that to what it would be equivalent of me doing? Because I think all channels have their own audience in their own category that they can all appeal to in different ways. Okay? This would be the equivalent of me making a video called I Hate Microsoft. All right? That, that's, a, that's a wild accusation. That's like, oh, wow, someone hates all of Microsoft. Okay. I use Microsoft products. I use Windows 10. Uh, this is like, okay, okay. Uh, what, what's his argument here? Is he complaining about the Xbox? What, what, what is he complaining about the Surface device? Like, they have the new CPUs. They have the new GPUs in the Surface book. What's, what's wrong? So you guys click on a video I make called I Hate Microsoft. And I say, they have not updated the Surface Studio ever since it came out. There's no Thunderbolt 3 on it. There's only one Thunderbolt 2 port, on, 2 port on it. And us professionals need Thunderbolt drives. We need external monitors. This is unacceptable. I hate that they haven't updated the Surface Studio. So that's why I hate Microsoft. Remember to like and leave a comment down in the description if you like this video and click the subscribe button. How many times have you guys heard people say that? Do we really need to keep saying that? That, that would be like... That's the whole reason you hate Microsoft, Drew? You're, like, mad that they haven't updated the Surface Studio? On a personal note, I kind of would like them to update it. That's, like, a neat desktop. It just hasn't been... They haven't done anything with it. He's mad that Apple hasn't updated their all-in-ones with 8th-gen CPUs, which result in slower export times in Adobe Premiere. Not Final Cut. In fact, if you compared an equally priced PC with... An iMac, even with last year's CPU, Final Cut Pro is still going to be faster. I know this from experience, not from some YouTube video I watched. We've used Premiere on our custom-built PCs and then switched to Final Cut on our older, lower-spec, overpriced iMacs. It's, you know why we switched back to the older iMacs? Final Cut, optimization, results in faster export times. What if I don't want to use Final Cut? Well, let's compare your advantages here. Final Cut, fast exports. Adobe, slow exports. Adobe doesn't want to be optimized on the Windows or Mac App Store. Everything has to go through the Creative Cloud. And they got to update it every two days. And they got to charge $30 a month permanently. Final Cut Pro, $300. Done. Buy it once, you can have it for 100 years with updates, with patches. Adobe Premiere, $30 a month till the day you die. And if you forget about it, obviously they're going to keep charging you. In the grave, literally. It's possible. So, comparing what we got here, magnetic timeline, you know? That's why I can't use Final Cut. I, there's a reason YouTubers like MKBHD are filming in like 8K and still using Final Cut. Optimization is important. It, Microsoft has better hardware for the specs because they need it. If they didn't have it, they would die. Apple, like, I agree. I agree. You guys know, like, I wanted the iMacs to be refreshed. I wanted the MacBooks to get the hexacore CPUs, the 32 gigs of RAM at WWDC. I was, I was bummed out about that. You guys remember my keynote? I was like, why couldn't they have they refreshed that? I went on Recycle Bin with John Prosser and said, I'm mad at Apple for not updating their CPUs. That, that's messed up. They could have done it and they haven't yet. Why haven't they done it yet? So am I going to upload a whole video called Apple Sucks Now for that? I thought he would at least go over, like, the company as a whole. He basically said, uh, they don't have 8th gen CPUs, and I dropped my phone. <laughs> you dropped your phone and it broke, huh? Yeah, I dropped it and it broke. Did you get a warranty? No, I didn't want to get a warranty. I don't like getting warranties. So you're mad that Apple's charging a lot to fix your phone that you didn't want a warranty on and you broke it? Yeah, so Apple, I hate Apple. I hate Apple now. The, optimization is everything. 
It's not all hardware. It's not all software. It's all about how they work together. That's what results in the best experience. The sad thing is like you want to you, you want to complain. People drop their phone all the time. If you drop your phone a lot, get get Apple Care. It's worth it. They have a program in place for people like Dave. He didn't want it. And now he's mad that he has to pay for the fact that he didn't want it. <laughs> okay, he also, you know, he Dave's also uploaded videos like, why does the iPhone 8 exist? So like, this is an old phone. They barely changed anything on it. They're still selling the iPhone 8. And it costs $700. There are good Androids for $500 now. iPhone 8 becomes top selling iPhone in the month of May. You can see a little disconnect here, right? There's a certain point, I think, when YouTubers and tech analysts and journalists get to a certain size that they start missing what people are actually thinking. I, I love communicating with these smaller tech channels and, and channels that are not enormous because they're just everyday people. There's not this giant disconnect. They're, they're, I don't know what it is. There's, there's maybe this certain entitlement that comes with your channel when you get bigger, when you become more famous and you have millions of subscribers. You're just like... At this point, oh, I dropped my phone. I can make a video about this. <laughs> hey, let's take apart an iMac Pro. Oh, we're not very good at this. Time to make some money. Think of all the ad revenue and sponsorship money they've made from dropping that iMac Pro display. This is all, this is all just raking it in, people. This is all just money, cash, rake. You know, just get everything. In. They've probably made like 50 grand at least with this iMac Pro series. They could buy 10 iMac Pros with how many displays they've dropped. You become more greedy, exactly. Unbox Therapy basically spent like the first two minutes of his iPhone 10 video complaining that Apple didn't send him a free one. He was like, keep in mind that when I'm reviewing this phone, I'm going to take into consideration that Apple didn't give me a free one. <sighs> If, if people are going on YouTube to get people's thoughts on a product, are you going to, why do so many people want to watch, why do people so many, why do you want to watch a video about a guy who's mad that he didn't get a free phone? Do you trust the credibility of that person? Or are you going to trust the credibility of a consumer who says, I work, I, I make a living, I've generated an income, and I spent 1,000 of my hard-earned dollars, maybe more, depending on where you are in the world, on the iPhone 10. Now I'm going to tell you about it. Not, my channel's big, so I should get free stuff, and when I don't get free stuff, I'm going to complain about it. That is the definition of entitled. And now we're getting to this point where YouTubers can just be like, hey, they didn't update their CPUs at WWDC. I hate Apple. Apple's terrible. They're a terrible company. I hate what they do. Yeah. I have my phone here on the desk. I'm good with my phone. I don't I don't break well, broken. I could make a video about this. How much is this to replace? Five hundred dollars? How much is my red camera? Ninety grand? <laughs> Stupid Apple. I hate Apple. They should fix all these phones for free. Dang it. You could buy a OnePlus 6 for the price of an iPhone 10 repair. Yeah, you know, you could just lose all your features. You could lose wireless charging. You could get a slower CPU. You could get three years of security updates. You could use all the telephoto features. You could use, uh, you could lose all the secureness of Face ID. You could lose all the uh, reliability of iOS and the software updates you'll get for years after that. You could lose all that. Sure. Go for it. Or you can put up with a little crack on the back of your phone and just look at that and remember, hey, you should get the warranty next time. Phone still works, Dave. <laughs> Apple Care is $10 a month. Ugh. About your comments on Dave and Linus Tech Tips, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. This will be, uh, be an interesting stream after the fact that it's live. Pick up the iMac Pro, put it in your car, and go top speed, then push the iMac Pro out of it. Yeah, yeah, really, though, at this point. Yeah, how, ma how many videos of this have you seen? How many said, this phone will change the world. Don't buy iPhone. Don't get stressed with them. Hate equals dark side. Dude, I'm going to the dark side. That's fine. 
I'm just not going to make videos about it. So streams will be a great place for the clickbait to not happen because less people watch live streams because they're not edited. Um, so that means I can talk about all this stuff on here and not get all of the audiences um, rushing over here. If I all I cared about was growing my subscriber count and just getting a bunch of views, I would absolutely cave to all of these requests. I would I would make Dave Lee response, Linus Tech Tips response, John Prosser response. I'd, I'd respond to everyone. I'd get views for days. But that's not the kind of channel I want to be. I want to listen to my audience. I want to try to be the best that I can be for them and try to do what I'm good at. I learned from the Rossman situation, okay? Isn't this what you guys wanted? Isn't the people who hated me from Lewis Rossman just want me to not talk about what I'm not good at? Okay, I won't. <laughs> I'll just stop then. Yes, I saw the Zone of Text video. About getting a MacBook Pro this summer for school, but I think the MacBook Pro is getting refreshed this December. Should I buy the current model? I would argue you probably don't need a MacBook Pro for college, but if you absolutely do, I mean, if you absolutely need it, I guess you could get one now, but I'd really encourage you to wait if possible. It, it'd really be better for you to wait. Thank you, Kieran, for super chatting. <laughs> I'm thinking about making a video like intersplicing like the notch is terrible and there's no touch ID then cut to one plus six video of like this is a great phone I love this or Oppo Find X or, oh this is a great phone I love this this is fine this is wonderful uh, yeah I'm thinking about doing that shall we sympathize all those Apple hating YouTubers now they're lost there's, there's reasons you may not like Apple. I just think that all the reasons people uh, on YouTubers are listing right now are wrong. They're, they're not genuine. I know people. There's friends and family in my life that don't like Apple. They don't buy Apple products. And we get along fine. And they, they have their reasons. But you know what it comes down to? Taste. You know why we call it personal taste? It's because no one argues about these kind of things with, like, food. Or at least that often. No one's like... Yeah, I don't like sushi. How can you not like sushi? You know, like, it, some people, it's taste. I don't know. I just don't like it. Do you have to provide a reason as to why? You don't, do you have to go into detail about the fish or the texture or anything? Or can someone just say, I don't like sushi. I prefer chocolate over vanilla. Can you just say that? Or does someone have to tell you why you're wrong for saying that? Or you need to shut up because I like chocolate, therefore you must like chocolate. Like, can... <laughs> No, I don't watch the World Cup. William, thanks for the super chat. I like using my phone without a case because I'm not clumsy. And also, um, I'm, I'm responsible with my phone. I don't throw it around. I don't drop it. And also, I like the way it feels without a case. It's just very light. It's a good feel. Stainless steel with glass. is just a, It's a nice build quality. I like it. What songs do you use in your vlogs on Talos of Talks? My sister made them herself. For us, which is very nice. Do you think the MacBook Pro with the touch bar is worth the extra $500? Well, Mark, worth is always subjective. To someone, it may be worth it. To someone, it may not. To me, it is. I really like the touch bar. In fact, I really wish I could get a Magic Keyboard with the touch bar on top. I would totally use that. Um, but um, they, they don't have that, and I, I know it's expensive. And there's, but I, I'm not against the idea of them making a MacBook Pro without a touch bar. Like if they were able to make a 15-inch version with the good GPU and the good CPU but no touch bar, just function keys on top, that would probably sell really well. I'm not anti-options. I'm just saying if you're asking me personally, I like the touch bar. I used it a lot. I used the volume controls. I used predictive text. I even used emoji support because us Mac OS users actually do a lot of texting on our Macs. So to some PC builder out there, that's going to sound stupid, but you don't use your computer for the same things we do. So... I liked I liked the touch bar and I wish I wish I still had it. But there's people out there who don't need it and who don't want it. And I, I think that Apple should have I think that Apple should have an option for that. If I had to get a Windows laptop, I would I kinda wanna get a I guess I'd go Surface Book 2 because they've got really good specs in them. Not that it matters due to the optimization, but uh I might go I I may go Razor or something like that. Luckily I don't have to make this choice, but um I'd probably go Surface or Razor, something like that. Let's see. What is your most valuable old Apple product? Probably we have an original iPhone here, the OG first generation. That one's probably pretty valuable and will get more valuable as time goes on. 
Is the absence of wireless charging and Face ID and years of support worth the $500 savings on OnePlus sucks? Well, like I said, Angel, worth is subjective, depending on your income, what you care about, what you use in a smartphone. To me, it is worth it. No, it's not half a phone. OnePlus 6 is getting you a lot of what you would use with your iPhone 10, but it's okay to pay extra for those features that you care about. Unbox Therapy responded to me on Twitter because I made a tweet about that. <laughs> oh, there is a watermark on the screen. Maybe I should get rid of that. Doesn't it have, like, no value if it isn't brand new? <laughs> Possibly. One plus sucks. <laughs> There's a good name for it. It doesn't suck. It's just I, I'm, I'm not ever excited for a one plus phone. Every time a one plus phone comes out, I'm like, eh, all right. All right. Next line is video. Don't buy a couch because it can't handle a chainsaw cutting through it. Oh, dude, you could have made a flex tape joke right then. That would have been great. Why would you make the back of the OnePlus 6 glass if it doesn't have wireless charging? They claim it so that you can have gigabit cellular, which no one has gigabit cellular. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Especially the people who have a OnePlus phone. They definitely do not have one. They do not have gigabit if, uh, internet. Found out uh, John's planning on buying a iPhone 9. He's going to get a white one, and I'm going to be getting a white uh, iPhone 10 Plus. So we'll be getting phones as white as we are later this year. That'll be exciting. <laughs> I refuse to buy a phone I can't see in person first. That's a that's a good that's a, that's a good reason. I think that's fair. Flex tape can fix your iMac Pro. Uh, dude, I should tweet that at Linus. Just a video, just... Now that's a lot of damage. <laughs> How about a little more? <laughs> Cut to Linus crushing the display. <laughs> hey, I update OS. <laughs> He's in the chat. We got that verified check mark. We're verified check marks. We're verified check mark buddies. That's a lot of damage. <laughs> oh my God, I want to make that meme now. Can't you just see? Can someone? All right, you know what? There's a lot of you watching this. Someone out there has to make the meme where they put Linus tech tips on Phil Swift's chest right here, and then the bucket is a iMac Pro, and he's stabbing it. He's like, ah, "That's a lot of damage." <laughs> I don't even need to tweet that. I just want to watch that. That just sounds hilarious. Uh, what did he originally do with his iMac? Oh yeah, he just. Uh, he wanted to show the parts of it for a video, so he opened it up, and the people that work for him are not good at putting them back together, so they broke it. And now they're mad that Apple won't fix it. That, that's the drama we're talking about here. That's, that's the drama. Hey, Drew, what's the best way to get in touch with you for a possible future collaboration? Also, this has been the, less, the best live stream yet. Thank you. Uh, basically, Patreon is the best way to do it. We have a whole system set up for that and uh, I'm, I'm very busy so I can't guarantee when I'll be available for certain things but yeah that's definitely the best way to get a hold of me <laughs> Linus broke our shotguns in Fortnite season five tomorrow dude that's a lot of damage how about a little more <laughs> I just saw this Mac in half <laughs> But first, let's talk about I fix it because I can't. <laughs> All right, we're we're way over the normal time for live streaming. I'm just having fun at this point. But um, let, let's set something straight for the record. Uh, I'm not against you if you do sponsored content. If, if your channel, that's that's how you get your bill bills paid. Uh, I don't hate you if you have a uh, sponsored content. That that's totally fine. If sponsors work for you, that's great. But. You got to be a little honest here. You you got to give you got a little little credit. The amount of sponsorships and the placement of sponsored ad reads in Linus's videos are hilarious. They're so disingenuous and out of place. Like I watched the part 2 video of Linus Tech Tips and I just I laughed. Unironically, I literally just started laughing. I was just entertained. I was like the fact that you're like you can't wait to see how Apple handled this situation next. But I fix it. <laughs> I can't help it. There's nothing wrong with being sponsored, okay? There's good ways to do sponsorships. I, I, like, I don't hate you if you're sponsored. I'm just saying 
the way they do sponsorships on Linus Tech Tips is hilarious. It's just, it makes me literally laugh out loud. I just, I can't help it. I, I, I just, I just bust out laughing. I can't take it seriously. When someone starts a video with, will the Surface Go actually be able to compete with the iPad? But Squarespace, let's, do, <laughs> it's just the, the, the juxtaposition is so drastic. <laughs> it's so last minute. Am I, je no, <laughs> I am, I am definitely not jealous. Am I jealous that I can make my I can't make my videos uh, incredibly disingenuine and make people laugh out loud at how awkward the transitions are? By the way, I could. Channels much smaller than mine get sponsored all the time. I get emails from people nonstop. I I don't answer them. I don't want to be sponsored. If I have to be sponsored because ad revenue goes downhill, I may do it as a last resort if it needs to happen to pay the bills. But if I can get by without it. No problem. I'll, uh, so far, we're getting by without it, so I'm, I'm not going to. <laughs> we're, we're, we could be making way more money uh, than we are right now, but I'm not in this for the money. I'm, I'm doing this to make the best type of content I want to make. It's kind of dark. You can add... Yeah, we could add a little bit more light. It's... Uh, I can still edit the settings. Oh, sorry. You got to see my gross hand there. Don't know how much that helped. Sorry, that was probably gross. Probably disgusted all of you. Um, can you do a case review for iPhone 8 Plus? I don't use an 8 or 8 Plus anymore, but the cases are... The silicone cases wear off too quickly. If you want to hate Apple for something, that's something I would you should hate Apple for. The uh, silicone cases, they, they wear down way too fast. Hmm. Apple Music or Spotify? Depends on where you are, dude. There are certain countries in which Spotify literally costs like five times as much. I'm sorry there's two T's on the screen. I have a custom watermark built into YouTube, and then I also added a watermark in OBS, so I'll need to get rid of that next time. Mm -hmm. the Apple Music and Spotify, they all basically do the same thing. There's, there's little things that give slight advantages, but nothing major. They got a cheaper option for Apple Music at my school, so I get it there, or Spotify at my place, and it partners it with Netflix. So there's always tiny little things that separate them, and it varies from person to person. Certain people have to pay, like, way more money for Spotify, so that of course they go Apple Music. Of course they do. Samsung Dex, like if you connect your phone to a dock, keyboard, and mouse, and a monitor, it will run a limited version of macOS. I don't think it would result in a good experience, which is why they haven't done it. Apple is for the good experience. They don't always get it, but that's what they're aiming for. Do likes give you money? They do not. Super Chat gives me money. No hating on front page tech, guys. I love front page tech. Apple Music has more listeners in the U.S. now. Yes, they surpassed Spotify uh, in the United States. That's it. I don't believe elsewhere. There's nothing wrong with Spotify and there's nothing wrong with Apple Music. It just it depends on the location you are, basically. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't understand how the giant tech channels that are there now got so big or or stay so big, honestly, how they keep their uh attention. Um it would take a lot to get Apple to go bankrupt. They would basically have to give every human being on earth like Seven times. If they gave every human being on earth like $100, maybe they could go bankrupt. <laughs> but I don't think they're going to do that. No damage. <laughs> That'd be funny if likes did give you money. They don't, though. Hmm. Well, I don't like I don't like Spotify because there's no Apple Watch app that I can use via cellular. Um, so that's what I use Apple Music for. So it, it's tiny things like that. That's not going to matter to all of you, but, you know, it just depends person to person. Anyway, I think it's time to wrap it up. We've had a lot of salt. We've got a lot of ranting during this stream. It was a lot of fun. I love being able to rant with you guys. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for the super chats. Thank you for all your feedback on the new stream setup. There's definitely some problems. I'll do my best to fix, try to fix some of this lag issues. May result in notch knocking it down to 720p at 60 for a, live for a live stream. I don't think that's that bad. I think you guys would understand. Um, and, uh, yeah, that, that watermark overlay, I will try to fix. 
best I can. So thank you guys uh, for coming. Thank you guys for tuning in. Really, really appreciate it. Hope you all have an excellent day. Take care. And now we'll cut to the loop to fade out. Boom. Fade out.